So you're taking a trip to Antarctica, huh? Bundle up, it's freezing cold, and make sure you learn about their rules and laws. The last thing you want is to get in trouble. But don't worry, I'm here, and today we're looking at the weirdest laws or rules in Antarctica. If you want us to continue this series, let us know in the comments below what place we should do next. And make sure to check out our videos on the weirdest laws in Japan and China if you haven't already. Starting off this countdown, we have the pests. One very important thing to know about Antarctica is that its ecosystem is pretty fragile. This is due to climate change, loss of biodiversity, human impacts, and the accidental introduction of non-native or alien species. Somehow, we as humans have introduced 121 types of fungi, 72 invertebrates, 8 mammals, and 3 bird species. Now, there are even worms in Antarctica. This is why Antarctica has a don't pack a pest rule. This means that before coming to Antarctica, everything you bring must be thoroughly washed, decontaminated, and inspected. This is to make sure you don't got any tiny seeds on ya. They'll even hoover you just to make sure. It's pretty intense, but it's done in order to protect Antarctica. Moving on to number nine, we have no souvenirs. So you took a trip to Antarctica and you want to take something as a memento to remember your trip by. Too bad, you're not allowed to. Taking anything home from Antarctica is banned. That includes a small pebble from a beach or a small bird feather. You can't take any kind of biological material home. Now the reasoning behind this is that there are around 10,000 scientists operating there. They don't want you accidentally taking a fossil home with you or something. You also can't take any equipment you find randomly, even if it's unattended, because chances are it's research equipment and that would be stealing. There's no finders keepers rule in Antarctica, sorry. Moving on to number eight, we have the lichen. Believe it or not, but plants do grow in Antarctica. When people think of this continent, they think of it as a cold, barren place, which is fair, but several types of grass, moss, and lichen grow there. One rule that Antarctica has is that you are prohibited from walking on the lichen. Now, it's because that it takes such a long time to grow, and if it gets damaged, it'll take an even longer time to repair itself. And it may not look like much, but it's vital to Antarctica's ecosystem. In our seventh spot, we have the rescue. Now, Antarctica is pretty freaking big. It's twice the size of Australia, and it has the lowest recorded temperature on Earth. Not only that, but there's not a lot of people living there, which is why, if you're in danger, don't expect to be rescued. It sounds depressing, but it's just realistic. And with Antarctica's unpredictable weather conditions, rescues are basically impossible. Tour groups literally will tell you not to stray away. If anything happens to you, you're kind of SOL. This place might be beautiful, but it's harsh and full of unseen dangers. In our sixth spot, we have the no guns law. Antarctica is a demilitarized zone, meaning absolutely no military activity can take place there. This means that there cannot be any military bases or structures of any kind, and absolutely no weapons testing. With that comes the no weapons law. No firearms or explosive devices are allowed there unless you have been given direct permission. Now, officials in Antarctica do have a firearm, but it's locked away in a glass cabinet in the station master's office. It's a 12 gauge shotgun, and it's only used in emergency situations. According to a local, the only time the station master used this gun was when a man was chasing another man around town with a butcher knife shouting something about aliens. The next day, the station master was seen escorting this man, who was placed in a straitjacket, onto a plane to get him out of there. He had his gun with him as protection. Other than him, you're not allowed to have any firearms in your possession. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the dolphins. Dolphins are cute, right? Maybe you want to go out whale and dolphin watching and you just want to get close to them. Well, don't. There is a rule in Antarctica that states you must leave the dolphins alone. This includes sailing a boat directly into a group of dolphins to try and get them to bow ride with you. Now, they have been known to do this on their own, but it's forbidden to harass these mammals in an attempt to get them to do it. Not only that, but Antarctica is home to hourglass dolphins. These types of dolphins are very rare and not yet threatened, so they want to keep it that way. In our fourth spot today, we have the wisdom teeth removal. Turns out that you gotta get your wisdom teeth removed before going to Antarctica. 
This is mainly important for people wanting to stay there for a while or those that are going to work there. If you're doing a quick visit, then you don't really gotta worry about this. Now, having your wisdom teeth removed lessens the risk of having a medical emergency since medical aid is very limited there. But not everyone needs to have them removed. You have to undergo rigorous medical and dental exams before going to Antarctica. So if it's found that your wisdom teeth won't be a problem, then you don't have to have them removed. In our third spot, we have the nuclear weapons. Antarctica is a nuclear free zone. You know, just in case you were thinking about bringing a nuclear bomb or something with you, you can't. I'm sorry. On top of that, it cannot be used for testing nuclear weapons. A treaty was made when test explosions were being carried out in the South Pacific. They were scared that Antarctica, being largely deserted, was going to be an area where people also wanted to conduct nuclear testing. But this treaty prohibits them from doing so. You're also not allowed to use Antarctica for the disposal of nuclear waste. Moving on to number two, we have the appendix removal. If you're going to Antarctica for an extended period of time to visit, live, or work there, there's just one tiny little thing you have to cough up. Your appendix. Yeah, you heard me. Anyone there for a long time has to get their appendix removed. Now this is because the nearest major hospital is 1,000 kilometers away or 625 miles. And there are only a few doctors on base and none are specialist surgeons. So if something goes wrong with your appendix, they won't be able to help you. Now there are also doctors available in the research bases. Again, none of them are surgeons who can operate on appendixes. Also, let's say something severe does happen. Medical Medical evacuations take a lot of time and effort and end up putting everyone else at risk. So they make people get their appendix removed as a preventative measure. And in our number one spot today, we have the jurisdiction. Now the jurisdiction of Antarctica is confusing. And that's because Antarctica doesn't belong to anyone. There is no single country that owns Antarctica. So when you visit, you're under the jurisdiction of your own country. Same with the researchers working there, regardless of which national station they may visit. So when there, you are subjected to the laws of your country. If you break any of the rules of the Antarctic Treaty, you face the laws on that when you return home. Same thing goes if you commit a crime there, you face punishment when you return home. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. Uh, have you ever been to Antarctica? Let me know in the comments below, or do you want to go? Let me know in the comments below. I think it's too cold for me, okay? Canada is cold enough. I don't think I'd be able to handle it there. Uh, and now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 underwater discoveries the government is trying to hide. Josh Hardy commented, can't be eaten in space. Uh, so I was arguing which one is scarier, the ocean or space. True, you can't be eaten in space, but you can get hit by a meteor or an asteroid or just random floating space junk, boom, you're pretty much done. Uh, also, it you have to like, it, there's just a lot of rules to go to space and the food's not good and you're floating around and if you get sick, it's a, your SOL. The ocean, it's not much better, honestly. Let's just leave those areas. <laughs> Let's just, yeah, just leave them alone. Eric Garcia commented, you seem like a nice fun person to be around. If you're ever in Florida, let me know. Uh, if you wanna pay for my flight, I'll be there. That goes for everyone. If uh, if someone's from Paris and they want to invite me to Paris, I'll come. I really want to go to Pelly. Axmuth commented, the giant sea monster is just a rock. Like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, he's just chilling there, caught on Google Earth, just with his eyebrows. I can't do it. Can you do it? <laughs> I can't do it. And JC commented, not Jay-Z, JC. God, you're gorgeous, snap. I know he meant Snapchat, but there you go. No one's getting my Snapchat. All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll show you when I show you. Bye. This is due to climate change, loss of bio. Then you don't have to have them removed. <laughs> Again, none of them are surgeons who can operate on appendices. Appendixes, whatever. Appendixes, yeah.